it may be cultural engineering. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. And as I said at the start, I don't disagree with the idea that this could exist or does exist to some extent, but I don't see that as a necessarily harmful thing. Um, I think, again, like ideas change over time. And if in, I don't know, 20 years time, BLM is a useless kind of idea, I think generally speaking, people will drop it. People still think it has use. People will keep perpetuating it. And that's just kind of how things have always been. And until I see some evidence to suggest otherwise, I don't really see how I can change my mind on this. I, even if like it's only something like, I don't know, 20% of all Americans supporting BLM. I'm just throwing a number out. I have no idea if that's true or not. Um, but even if it is that amount, that's still, a, you know, a decent amount of people that are going to be willing to, you know, if a corporation panders to you, go, be, may perhaps be more willing to go and buy their products and that stuff. So like, again, I, I don't know. I just don't see this as cultural engineering because realistically, it seems like something that sparked up as a result of something else. And I don't know, maybe you could argue it's been kind of like, um, elongated or perhaps um, promoted by corporations. But realistically, when something gets promoted by corporations that generally speaking, the populace really disagrees with, there's a ton of pushback. You've seen this for a lot of the um, far left stuff that corporations are pushed for. You've seen it for a lot of the far right stuff corporations are pushed for. So I'd, if people were really this against BLM, I would be shocked to find any corporations actually wanting to, you know, push it. So I, I just, I, I don't see how this is culture engineering if there's so many other clear counterexamples and a very obvious, I guess, um, mechanical explanation as to why it is in the place it is, you know? Well, does the, I think... I'm curious, does any of that, do you agree with any of that? Or is do you think it's all total shite? I'm just curious. I think that there was pretty broad support after the incident. I'd say, I think if I remember, if I recall correct, it was something like 50, 60%. Of America was saying, I support BLM. Now it's down to something like 20, 30% after it came out that the co founder bought several multi million dollar homes with BLM money and that literally a billion dollars of this BLM money that they took in to help black people has somehow magically vanished. This kind of stuff tends to bring down their support. But I, I would say that the support in the first place, other than around the actual incident that was, you know, has many questions around that, by the way. So you guys, you guys had this question. Uh, neither one of you knew. It looks like the poll I have, it was at 78%. Oh, what, 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 that was, was the, support, this? the support for Black Lives Matter uh, post. That was probably off the George right. Floyd then, right? Yeah, yep, right afterwards. So I just wanted to clear that up. So you both have that number. Okay. Did you get a, did you get a read on when it is currently, though, Andrew? I'll look that up. You guys can continue. All right, thank you. Any, I did anyway, have a little quick Google, but I couldn't see anything. Um, there's a Pew Research thing from s September, but actually, that's pretty new. Um, but yeah, sorry, go on, Nick. Um, so I think that it's not the it's not the idea of support for these things. It's the idea that corporations will pour money into them to change the perception of the public. Right? That is sort of the the heart of the cultural engineering as we've defined it for the purposes of this debate. So it does seem like no matter what the actual support is, once they start to do that, once they start to change it through relentless advertising, that starts to give other people the perception that it's supported by other people. And the thing about human psychology is, especially the female half of humans, they tend to be very herd-minded. Males tend to be very pack-minded. Women can, tend to be very herd-minded. So if they see I, everyone yeah, else going sorry, in that direction, well, they're like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I'm gonna need a source for that. Um, well, in, the in, health psychology? in the private chat from 538, he tracked the BLM support started at 85% and is currently at 37%. That's what I was oh, thinking, yeah, something like that. That sounds yeah. about right, yeah. Right. It, it had, it, uh, there was something I was reading recently about a, a collapse in BLM support where it was something like their words or something to that effect. But um, yeah. I mean, the, the Pew Research one I found seems to have it down. At, so this is a bit higher, actually. Um, for September 2020, um, it's 55 percent. I don't know what the discrepancy between those two numbers are, but I don't think I can. Yeah, I'm, I'm just showing you what the 538 said. They're 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 yeah, pretty yeah. Known, known to be fair, you know, fairly accurate, I guess, as these things go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but that's, course, yeah. But that's there in the private chat for you guys to reference if you if you didn't know that. But I'll let you yeah. guys keep going. Oh, okay. Um, let's see where were we at. Uh, Black Lives you, so you were talking about um, you were talking about the differences between women and men, um, and something. Oh, so yeah. Like, I can't remember what it was in reference to. Oh, I think so. Mentality and like you're basically saying that an idea right. is pushed and that's it's uh, persists throughout a population because humans have a natural kind of tendency to agree with other humans broadly is what I guess you're saying. 
Yeah, I mean, want social right. inclusion is the sort of technical psychological terms to put it in. But I think I got that for to source it. I think I got that from Edward Dutton, the uh, I think evolutionary psychologist. Um, he has a YouTube channel too. Okay. I, You're okay, not a fan, I, clearly. That I have no idea who that is. But anytime oh, okay. someone says Evo Psych, I get highly skeptical because I think a lot oh, okay. of things can be misattributed to Evo Psych. But be, that's an I don't know the sources, so I can't really dispute that. He might but, actually um, be a sociologist. I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh, I know he okay. does a lot well, around. I know he does a lot, a lot around human evolution. That's that's what I do know. Um, I, but look, it, let, I think we can both be honest here and say that that doesn't sound like the best source in the world. I'm not saying it is or isn't true, but just you'd have to look into the studies. We can both agree on that, right? You'd have to look into something a bit more solid. Yeah, I mean, yeah? to make a to make a very specific okay. scientific claim, okay. But I'd say that in general, from my own perception, from my own life experience, I tend to see a lot of that effect. I tend to see that men will herd up and do. I mean pack up into a little pack of men and women tend to go where the group of women go. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a bigoted statement to make. I think it's just it's obvious. Well, I'd say, I'd say all of that's kind of beside the point and yeah, doesn't really have that much to do with our topic to kind of steer it back on track just a little bit. I'll let you respond to it, but just to steer it back on track just a little bit. Uh, maybe you can talk. One of the things that Devin said I have in my notes right now is he, he's kind of attributing and I'm not going to mischaracterize your position, but, uh, you said, you know, culture engineering is a byproduct of corporations wanting to make money. I think that that's probably a fair characterization to an extent. But do you think that maybe that's a little short sighted or silly considering the close relationship that governments have with different corporations? Um, so, yeah, I actually don't necessarily disagree. I do think there is potential for harm there. And as someone who is, um, you know, concerned with a bit, like multitude of um, social issues, I can definitely see that there could potentially be harm there. And like, as you say, like, um, you know, there, there is a kind of a, a talk or a conversation going on between politicians and corporations. So I, I can understand some of the potential skepticism, but I guess the reason I find it to be a strange point isn't so much because of that, um, because basically I think it's always just over a profit motive or whatever. It's more a case of, I've just never seen an example of a corporation trying to engineer something that the population doesn't already more or less agree with. There's some cases where they've done stuff that is kind of like, I guess, controversial, and they usually get a lot of pushback on it. Um, even some of the BLM stuff, depending on how radical it is by corporations, it has had pushback. Like, I'm, I can't remember who it was exactly, but I could have sworn there was someone who came out um, that was basically like, um, there was a corporation that did something that massively promoted like specifically the violent rioters and there was a fuck ton of pushback against that. I can't remember, I can't remember the exact example. I'd have to go research it again. But when this stuff does happen, like, it, I don't know, it just seems like there's so much pushback for it that I can't see this as kind of like an invisible hand sneaking in these, you know, incepting ideas into our mind. I just can't realistically ever see it like that. I, the, what I will address, though, and one thing that I do think is an interesting point is you brought up the point about herd psychology, and the reason you brought that up is because you believe that um, if an idea gets an amount of steam and then a corporation pushes more steam on or more fuel onto the fire, basically, you're saying that it could spread further than it would otherwise. My, I guess I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I just don't think that it's this huge harm, I guess, because it seems like whenever there's an idea that starts to make um, any kind of progress and you have corporations that support it, depending on how the public feels about it, it there will be either pushback or it will get progressed. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. If it's something the public broadly supports, if it gets progressed slightly quicker, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. It may be cultural engineering. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. And as I said at the start, I don't disagree with the idea that this could exist or does exist to some extent but i don't see that as a necessarily harmful thing um i think again like ideas change over time and if in i don't know 20 years time blm is a useless kind of idea i think generally speaking people will drop it people still think it has use people will keep perpetuating it and that's just kind of how things have always been and until i see some evidence to suggest otherwise i don't really see how i can change my mind on this um but yeah go ahead well, I'm suggesting also that they alter the popularity of ideas. The obvious example is through advertising, but that's not just it. It's also through other other various means, through the media itself. Through when you watch, I'll give you an example in the news media. When you watch how the talking heads will cover something, a lot is conveyed through their facial expression, through their tone of voice, 
through their demeanor, through how they react to the news that they're reading out loud. And that conveys to the audience whether they should be in support of it, whether they should think it's vile, whether they should agree with it. And this is all happening on the subconscious level. This is not right up here in the prefrontal cortex, right? So this is not where people are going, oh, I think I would like that. I think I would dislike that. This is happening on a very you know, right under the surface level. And as a result of it, this sort of tends to, to build a, a momentum in the, in the populace. And eventually it alters the very popularity or unpopularity of a topic or an idea itself. So I would suggest that these popularity of something or, or unpopularity of something is not in and of itself organic either. Perhaps it was, I'll get, grant this, perhaps it was prior to mass media. I don't know because I quite frankly, I just don't have a time machine really, but we can we can speculate that perhaps it might have been before even the printing press, but w now with what we've got, I think it's very much not organic. But, okay, but you're going to have to provide some evidence of that because I can't think of a single example um, that would be, you know, that would support your case. Honestly, um, you brought up BLM, and like I said, that seemed like it was a very very grassroots thing. In fact, and remember, um, initially when it started sparking up and had a decent amount of support, nowhere near as much as it has today, but a decent amount of support. Um, corporations wouldn't touch it and they didn't for a long, long time um, until, you know, it did have a kind of more mass public appeal. Um, so, yeah, I, I just you're going to have to give me an example, I guess, that isn't BLM because I. All right. Well, I let, let me let me kind of step outside of the issue. Just go back into the psychology of it a little bit. We can we can agree that human for human beings, ostracization is one of the most vicious, rough things to experience, to be ostracized from the group. Right. So. If they're able to make it seem, even through perception, to alter the perception of people through, say, media, that BLM is the appropriate thing, that you are supposed to support BLM, that if you do not support BLM, that you are a, a, a bigoted person or you are a, a bad person, you are morally deficient, then you they can give the perception, they can manufacture the perception that you will be ostracized if you do not support BLM. Therefore, they've actually literally manufactured a whole bunch of people to present to the world that they support BLM, whether or not they actually do internally. That's my claim. And I think there's a lot of psychology to back that up. Yeah, okay. I don't necessarily disagree that this could be a problem. Um, but realistically, I just don't see it happen on a mass scale, especially with something as controversial as BLM. It's not like BLM is like, so I mean, right now, it actually has more opposition than support. And if I had to guess, I could probably go on Fox News, look at the last thing they said about BLM. And I, if I had to guess, it probably wouldn't be all too positive. Um, so I like, I don't necessarily disagree that this could be a problem. This could be pitfalls that humans fall into. But in regards to BLM, it seems like there's enough detractors. I mean, there's a ton of detractors. I mean, realistically, the last election was still incredibly close, and I'd be shocked to find that many Republicans support BLM. Um, so there's clearly a ton of detractors. So if you feel ostracized from a community because you don't support BLM, like I would be amazed if there's anywhere in America outside of maybe some very progressive cities, like maybe a few, um, I'd be shocked if there's anywhere where you couldn't find other people who don't support BLM, where you don't have to like cave into that. I, I like, I, yeah, I just don't see this as a real problem right now. Again, I'll grant you 100%, it could be in the future and it could happen with other things that I'm not thinking about, but for BLM, I just don't think it's applicable. Hmm. That's interesting. I attend, I, I think, you, I, okay, so I think one of the reasons you might get that impression is it very much depends which community you're in. I'm assuming you're in the UK based on your accent. I've, yeah, I've had yeah, you, yeah. friends from the UK. So uh, my experiences with the UK is, cause I, I used to live in Paris for a long time, by the way, um, mm -hmm. is that you guys are very liberal and you're very global modern, you know, you're, you're very metropolitan sort of uh, thing, right? So and then again, I didn't live in the UK, by the way. So, but here's the thing: it's it's it very much depends, I think, who you're surrounded by for these kind of impressions. And I think if you're living in a place like Michigan, like I am, that's very different than if you're living in a place like uh, like I don't know, assuming London or something. So you, I mean, it's very much going to depend. I think if you're going to take the whole entire nation state to to make the assessment, you're probably going to get more of a mix, and it's probably going to be much more balanced, probably. But I think if you try to go into these very specific places, if you go to New York City or London or LA or something, or you go to Paris or you go to Germany, it's probably much more support. It's really going to, I think there's also going to be a difference between urban and, and uh, urban and the country. So I think it's going to be very interesting like that. But I, I don't think, you know, I think that the support in the cities largely does come from the experience of people in the cities, which is very multicultural and which is very accepting of other cultures of other people groups etc 
So I think that, you know, that's where you're going to see your difference too.